Hello YouTubers, I want to welcome you to another edition of Bargain Bin Amps. And we haven't done a Bargain Bin Amps in a while. Now, uh, recently I had sold a, a O and FX pedal you know, I wasn't using at all. As a result, I was able to uh, purchase an amp head. Okay. Now, things I look for in an amplifier or in an amp head, either one. Uh, one is I prefer uh, tube amps, right? That's the first thing. Um, and it has to be inexpensive, right? It seems to be the trend is, you know, amplifier, tube amp, you know, and a new price um, can exceed $1,000, right? And those kinds of things. Um, and remember, I like to play in stereo. So I kind of need two of them, right? You know, and if each one is a thousand dollars, well, that's two thousand dollars. Ouch! So I went looking around on the used market, and in particular, I was looking for a particular app head. And the reason is, it's because it's one of my favorites. And unfortunately, it's no longer made. Right? And they made a combo version and a head version of this particular amp. And, um, unfortunately, yeah, they're, they're discontinued. They're no longer made. Hello, YouTubers. I want to welcome you to another edition of Bargain Bin Amps. And we haven't really done a, a Bargain Bin Amps in a while. So I chose this moment to do so. Um, now recently, I sold kind of an effects pedal that I just wasn't using. And decided to get an amp, okay, in particular, an amp head. Now, I had certain requirements uh, for the amp head, okay, one, it had to be a tube amp head, it had to have a really good clean sound, it had to have a really good reverb sound, right? And it had to be inexpensive. And you think that'd be pretty simple to find, but no. That's a tall order. Especially with new amp heads going up in price, you know, exceeding $1,000 many times. Not to mention um, that I used two in stereo, so you can imagine if each amp was a thousand, right there's two thousand dollars. You know, I mean, it gets downright silly, really. Um, however, I love the tube feel and the tube sound, it's much more dynamic um, compared to a solid state. App. Um, at least for now. I may change in the future, I don't know. Okay. So, there are fewer and fewer tube heads that fit the bill. 
But one of my all-time favorite amps is the Fender Super Champ X2. And unfortunately, they stopped making the Fender Super Champ X2. Um, but it was a inexpensive uh, Fender tube amp, really. Um, it came in a combo version with a 10-inch speaker or in a head version with no speaker but they were identical as far as uh, features and everything like that now here's the thing these were unbelievably inexpensive really I mean I think that the head new was $299 and I think the combo was $349 or $399 something like that very inexpensive tube amps um, now there is a catch of course right and that is that the Fender Super Champ X2 why it only has three tubes right three tubes um, and it was a 15 watt amp but here's the other catch is that um, some call it a hybrid amp and the reason is is that besides being a tube amp it can also do modeling and in that sense you know that was always one of the criticisms of the amp well it's not a real tube amp but I promise you if you take those tubes out the amp will not work <laughs> okay the Fender Super Champ X2 just has um, two channels and on the first channel basically it acts like a tube amp and it has that classic Fender clean sound and I mean it just sounds great you know it's very very close to the Fender Princeton in fact um, sound wise especially it's a really great clean sound but in addition on channel 2 it has 16 amp models different amp models okay and the reverb section is also um, digital and a lot of times you know you get saps criticizing it well it's not a real tube amp you know and stuff like that um, or or well it doesn't have a, a real spring reverb you know kind of thing and for me anyway uh, personally I don't like the real spring reverbs many times you know and prefer the digital reverb and this Fender X2 just has a really nice reverb or it's capable of a really nice reverb sound um, so in particular for me um, it's just the great solution to what I'm looking for, you know, uh, 15 watt tube amp, you know, and, and I, in fact, I prefer that it only has three tubes, because when it comes time to retube it, it's about 40 bucks as opposed to 200 on amps with more tubes, right? It's just um, a really nice. Um, clean sound especially and takes pedals very well and that kind of thing um, let's take a look at it here okay so here's the uh, Fender Super Champ X2 head right here so it kind of looks like an amp but without the speaker and in fact, below it is a combo amp. You can see it's much larger. 
So there's the X2 head. And along the front, you have channel one right here. And it has a, a gain volume, basically, right here. And then, um, over here, over here we have a bass, treble, um, and then an effect level, and um, choosing the number of effects. And the only difference here is that on channel 2, right, you've got the same thing, a volume level, but then here and here is to choose um, one of the 16 models, amp models, right? And then that's a little channel switch right there, a little white knob. And here, uh, along the effects, right there is a tap tempo. Okay, and the tap tempo allows you to basically set the timing of uh, delay effects, right? And it makes a big difference. And the older uh, Super Champ XD um, doesn't have that. That's one of the big differences. And then along the back, uh, you can see here, along the back you'll see uh, this is where the speaker plugs in, right? Then we got the power, and that's about it. It does have a line out. Okay, it also has a, uh, a USB out on the back, and that is because back in the day they had that you know that fuse software uh, where you could actually edit um, the effects, but also edit. You know, there's no middle tone control, only a bass and treble. And um, well, with a few software, you could add basically the middle and edit that and also a bright switch. Unfortunately, it was built on a Microsoft platform that no longer works. Um, the other thing is, uh, what it still can do, which is quite interesting, is it's, uh, you can plug that USB um, directly into your uh, PC and it's a direct out, basically, which is kind of interesting. You know, if you want to do some recording with just direct out. I was very sad to see the Fender Super Champ X2 be discontinued, in fact. Um, because it was a, a low-cost way to get just a great um, Fender kind of clean tube sound. And it definitely, when you play it, it certainly feels like tube, you know. And it does have, the, you know, two power tubes and a preamp tube, uh, but also the sound is great. So, and then there's the cost. You know, it was so inexpensive in comparison, you know. Now, unfortunately, uh, at the moment anyway, you know, unless you go with a Tone Master, kind of solid state amp, you know, to get a Fender tube amp, when you're up, basically for head-wise, they only offer the, the ProSonic head. And, of course, it's at about a thousand dollars, you know. So, anyway. Very inexpensive. But what I want to do here is, um, we'll go through the pros and cons of the Fender Super Champ X2. And why it's my favorite amp, I think, overall. You know, I mean... I just love the sound of it. Okay. Uh, so let's go over some of the pros. Okay. One price. Very inexpensive. Two. Right? Two map. It's a two map. And some people say, oh, well, it's not a real two map. 
but it is a, a tube amp. Um, granted, it has some um, <coughs> kind of hybrid, you know, solid state things going on as well. Um, but basically, it feels and sounds like a tube amp. Three it has a great clean sound on the first channel. Four it has a great reverb sound as well. I mean, I really like the reverb sound on it. It's very uh, smooth, if you like, sound, right? Um, some other pros of it are um, on the second channel, the 16 amp models. Um, though, to be quite honest with you, at least for me, uh, I usually, 99% of the time, I'm using the first channel. I just don't even use the second channel. But you could. <laughs> and it also has um, some other sounds like chorus and delay and those kinds of things. Okay? Uh, another thing is, um, I, I've never had one die on me or anything, you know, um, I mean, and sometimes I've had them on, like, overnight, forgetting to turn them off or something like that, and they still work great, and if you do need to replace the tubes, which I've had to do once, it was, it was 40 bucks. And I was like, well, that's no big deal at all. When I got this tube head, I was able to get the sound that I wanted out of it in, honestly, less than a minute. You know, some amps, you've got to constantly tweak to get the sound that you want and that kind of thing, you know. And I guess another thing I didn't mention was that the head version frees you uh, from the limitation of the combo version that has a little 10 inch speaker. So here, with the head version, and by the way, I should say the combo version can do the same. That you can, you're freed from the 10 inch limitation, 10 inch speaker limitation, to being able to hook it up to a 4x12, a 2x12 cabinet or other 1x12 cabinets. Okay, uh, another thing, it's small, it's portable, it's not all that heavy. So those are the pros. Now, let's talk about the cons. One, it's been discontinued, no longer made. It's a little harder to find. And I found that the head version is a little more expensive now and harder to find than the combo version. Okay. Another thing, it's only 15 watts. Right? So it's not like a 50 or 100 watt tube amp. Okay. Okay, it has no effects loop. Um, so any effects you run into it will be run straight into the amp. Okay. And, and for me, there's only one other con. For me, anyway. Is that it has a bass and treble EQ. But at one time, it had this fuse software, right, uh, where you could actually edit the, uh, the EQ section, and it would have a, um, basically a, a middle, right, and also a bright switch you could turn on and off, and change your effects on these. <coughs> Unfortunately, the platform that they built it on, right, which is a Microsoft, I think it was Silverlight platform or something, I don't know. But basically, it no longer works, no longer exists. Um, and I, oh, I forgot, this is, I guess, another 
Pro uh, was that the Fender Super Champ X2 uh, has a direct out, right? Um, that you can actually plug into your PC audio interface and it's a direct out, basically. Okay. I've never actually used it that way. Um, definitely prefer Mikey. But, anyway. So, other cons, I guess, is... <coughs> well, that's not even call them cons. Let's call them criticisms. One, they say it's not a real tube amp. Yeah. It definitely has a, a, a real power amp tube section. And as I said, you know, when the tubes go, you know, the amp doesn't work. So, you know, and I'll tell you what, to me, it has the feel and sound of a tube amp, absolutely. You know, now, did Fender use some solid state? things in their circuitry probably yeah you know um, but lots of other tube amps are like that as well you know and I mean we could go on and on and on about whether it's a tube amp or not for my purposes it's definitely a tube amp um, much more dynamic too than a solid state amp you know um Okay, uh, and I guess another criticism, I guess the reverb, right, is digital rather than a real reverb tank, which personally I don't like to begin with, so I guess that could be another criticism. Um, I mean, those are really the only criticisms I've heard of it, heard about it, you know? and for me the sound is so very, very good. Um, the clean sound especially. Um, in fact, quite frankly, I like it better than some much more expensive amp that are renowned to have a great clean sound. Right? And use 10 to 11 tubes, you know, all tube. Uh, for example, a Fender Deluxe Reverb. Right? Which, don't get me wrong, I love that amp. It's great. However, I will say that um, the Fender Deluxe Reverb is kind of noisy, to be honest with you. It definitely has a little hum to it when you turn it on that the X2 doesn't have. You know, I'm just saying. And for recording, you know, especially if you're going to have a lot of silent parts, in between the guitar parts, um, yeah, the, the little X2 is really, really quiet, you know, uh, and I mean, we could go on and on about, the Dr. Reaver has a lot of good stuff going on, too, you know, the sound is really amazing, but, um, for the price, you know, I cannot think of anything better, tube-wise, you know, uh, and I mean, I've tried some other ones, and there's a lot that I like, but definitely the X2 is, is one that I use uh, daily, basically, you know, it's kind of like if you had a car and it was your daily driver, you know what I mean, and, and you had some nicer cars, but you don't use them all the time, well, to me, that's the Fender X2. It's your daily driver, you know what I mean? It's the one you go to the, you know, grocery store or whatever. <laughs> With, you know? And, because it's, it's just the sound is really great. I, I think it's really nice. So anyway, uh, well, let's take a listen to it. All right. Now, I thought a little bit about how I was going to show you this. Amp. And I think that rather than going through every sound it can produce, um, I'll just show you the way I use it. Okay. Um, 
in this, in this particular case, um, I usually use two of them. Okay. Um, I really like that setup, a stereo setup, you know. And the way I get stereo is just out of an effects pedal, you know, stereo effects pedal. And the, you know, the left signal goes to the left amp, the right signal goes to the right amp. And they're both little Super Champ X2s, right? Um, and, well, uh, let, let me play it here, and then I'll tell you what's going on. Okay, now here's my uh, standard guitar sound, basically. Thank you. 
so let me tell you what's going on there. Um, it's basically the X2 on the first channel. Um, and I mean, I'm not even messing with the second channel at all. And as far as the, the built-in effects, I'm really just using a, just a reverb. approach a, a, the Super Champ X2 on the first channel, I basically have everything at 5. Okay, and that's a great starting point. Except maybe the volume, I mean, you could turn down, obviously. Uh, but as far as the bass, treble, and amount of effects and things, set everything neutral at 5 on the first channel. And then from there, you know, you can, um, you know, take down the treble a little bit or boost the bass a little bit you know <clears throat> and I mean that's basically my, you know my, the sound that I want you know um, and whenever I get another amp I often compare it to the Super Champ X2 surprisingly uh, now I will say I, I'm also uh, besides using the built-in reverb to get that kind of a little echo effect uh, I just use a Eventide H9 reverb as well, just a little tiny bit. takes the pedals really well and most of the time I play clean so very nice and in fact right now I'm playing uh, on the right side an X2 combo with a little 10 inch speaker but it's actually a Weber that's very nice um, and then the, the new uh, X2 head is going into a little box, tiny cabinet. It's actually really small, but it has a 12-inch speaker, and it's a um, greenback, right? Celestian greenback speaker. It's a 25-watt version of 16-ohm, you know. Uh, switch over to the channel 2 which has the 16 amp simulations um, we can try that now uh, all right now I'm over at uh, uh, the channel 2 I'm not sure what setting it's on as far as the amp simulation uh, but it gives you this kind of sound
bit different, not, not too much. That's kind of neat, you know. Uh, okay, I'll try another one, just a miscellaneous one. Um, and, and I'll switch over to a different uh, effect. Alright, so this is on channel 2 on some random amp simulation, and I switched the effect up from a reverb to something. I don't know, I was using the, the little tap tempo button on the X2s that the older XDs didn't have. Okay, anyway. So right there, I mean, you can tell um, it kind of messed with the bass emulation, which is very interesting, you know. Um, it's kind of strange because it almost seems like this little amp is really set up for channel one for what I do. And everything seems to work correctly sound-wise. Um, I'm going to switch over to channel two. Um, obviously, it, you know, it boosted the bass sound and kind of changed the balance of it. In other words, I'd have to go in and tweak it to make it just right if I wanted to use channel 2. Um, but I can honestly say that, you know, I basically don't use channel 2 is what it comes down to. I should probably. It'd be interesting. But channel 1 on the X2 really does it for me every time and it is part of my bass sound, my core sound that's the word I'm looking for it really is part of my core clean sound that I really really like you know um, and I mean that's just running through a little you know tiny box cabinet but you can run into a 2x12 or 4x12 and those kinds of things. So, this, you know, as far as I'm concerned, to get this kind of tube clean sound, you know, in an amp that's basically 300 bucks or under, is unbelievable, really. In comparison to other uh, tube amps, you know, it definitely has that Fender sound to it. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I've gotten so used to it of, of using Channel 1, 
it's almost like I forgot about Channel 2 altogether. Um, and, and the app alone is worth it for that Channel 1 uh, clean sound. So there you go, there's a the Fender Super Chat X2. And this particular case is a Fender Super Champ X2 head. You know, um, and I mean, I'd be perfectly happy uh, playing a gig with that amp. And it, you know, it gets quite loud actually. Um, has a decent amount of headroom too. You know, and to be quite honest with you, um, when I get an amp, uh, I, uh, a lot of times I'll make the comparison between it and the Fender Super Champ X2 just on the clean sound, which to me it sounds exceptional. I mean, it's just a really nice clean sound. The other thing is, you know, um, they say it's very similar to Fender Princeton, right? But, but a Fender Princeton, you know, is a thousand bucks or more. Which is crazy, really. And it's very similar, in fact. Um, and similar in sound, as well. You know? Except it's one-third the price. You know? Now you can nitpick and say, Oh, well, the Fender Princeton sounds a little better. You know, uh, but you got to remember it's one third the price too. You know, and, and sound wise, they're so very close. You know, a lot of times they'll say, "Oh, well, the Fender sounds better." Well, yeah, you're playing through a twelve-inch speaker as opposed to a little ten-inch speaker. You know? But in this case, we're talking about the head version. Um, anyway. Basically, when I got the amp head, I mean, it was less than a minute, honestly. And I got the exact sound I wanted very, very easily. You know? It just sounds great. So there you go. If you're looking for a good, clean sound and an inexpensive tube amp, you know, I would highly recommend the Fender Super Champ X2. And in fact, uh, you know, if you go online and things, I mean, it has a, a very good opinion from other players, you know. And in fact, it's surprising that sometimes they compare the Fender Super Champ X2 to amps that are three times the cost, you know. And quite honestly, I hope that the Fender um, company uh, comes out with a a Fender Super Champ X3. One other thing that's kind of interesting is that um, the X2 um, head and combo uh, were made in the same factory in Mexico, the Fender factory, where they make the Princeton. Right? Which it's most similar to. So I think that's really interesting too. And in fact, the one that they sent me just now, right? The manufacturing date is about 2020. February of 2020. So that's not very old. And it's probably one of the last, you know, before it was discontinued, one of the last uh, batches of the X2 amps, you know. And when I say that, I just mean it's not. You know, it's not 10 years old. You know, it's closer to two years old. So I think this was a great deal. I'm very, very pleased. Um, yeah. And, and, and one other thing I guess I could add. Um, I love the X2 sound, but I always wanted a bigger sound. But the nice thing is, when you have the head version, you hook it up to 2x12 cabinets and 4x12 cabinets. Well, that sound gets huge. 
right? It does get bigger sound. So there you go. Uh, and I suppose you could use more than one, you know, on each channel. You could use two or three if you really need the volume level. You know, or you could mic it, obviously. But it's just a really nice amp overall, I think. Um, especially between sound versus price. And believe me, I have heard a lot of more expensive amps that don't sound as good as the Fender Super Champ X2, for sure. So there you go, there's a look at uh, one of my favorite amps, you know. And who knows, maybe Fender will come out with a, another version of the Super Champ, you know. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Um, but I've noticed the prices of them, you know, since they've been discontinued, the prices have kind of gone a little higher because they know they're not making them anymore. So anyway, if you run across one of these, I highly recommend that you try it anyway. And it might become your favorite as well. Alright, very good. See you next time.